afternoon. Um, why don't we start in a place far, far away? Um, today, the Secretary General published a policy brief on the outer space governance, the seventh in our common agenda series that is aimed at informing member states ahead of the summit of the future next year. The brief was released to coincide with today's start of the session of the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. In the policy brief, the Secretary General says we must ensure that effective governance is in place to propel innovation to achieve the sustainable development goals. The brief also outlines a number of recommendations for member states in the UN system relating to sustainability, security, and the governance of outer space. Uh, you may have seen that uh, in a press release earlier today, the International Residual Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals concerning the delivery of the appeal judgment in the case against uh, Jovica uh, Stanisic and Franco uh, Simatovic. The Secretary General takes note of the appeal and extends his thoughts to the victims and survivors and their families who have suffered um, from the crimes for which uh, both defendants have been found guilty. The judgment marks the conclusion of the last case relating to the core crimes that the mechanism inherited uh, from the International uh, Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, which as you will recall was established in 1993 to prosecute persons responsible for serious violations of international humanitarian law committed in the territory of the former Yugoslavia since 1991. The Secretary General commends the judges and staff involved in this case for their unfaltering dedication and hard work since 2003 when the first indictment was filed. The Secretary General commends the judges and staff involved in this case for their unfaltering dedication and hard work since 2003 when the first indictment was filed. Uh, a number of you have been asking me this morning uh, about Sudan and the closed consultations this afternoon. I can confirm to you that the Secretary General did indeed ask to brief Security Council members on the dramatic situation in Sudan. That will be done in closed consultations this afternoon. Um, and moving on to the situation on the ground, the International Organization for Migration says more than 1.2 million people have been displaced inside Sudan as a result of the conflict. IOM's estimates are based on preliminary reports from field teams, while additional reports are likely to emerge as humanitarian access improves. To help those in need, we and our partners continue to deliver aid whenever and wherever we can. The World Food Program continues its distributions in Khartoum State, reaching 15,000 people trapped in uh, Omdurham pro um, area with emergency uh, food. Across the country, WFP has now reached more than 700, 782,000 men, women, and children with food and nutrition support over the past four weeks. The agency is also providing emergency telecommunication services to all of the UN system and the wider humanitarian community in Sudan, whereas you can imagine basic connectivity remains very much a challenge. As the UN Population Fund has now started to provide life-saving medicines and reproductive health supplies to maternity hospitals in Wad Midani and in Al Jazeera State, medical teams at this hospital are also providing reproductive health services to women and girls who have fled from the capital Khartoum. And on Ukraine, our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that hospitals and other health facilities in the country are being hit almost daily. They note that these attacks are putting health services at risk for millions of people, particularly those living in the front lines. Our humanitarian colleagues said that yesterday alone, at least three health facilities in the Donetsk region were reportedly damaged. This was on both sides of the front lines. That's according to authorities on each on both sides of the line. And as a reminder, the targeting or hitting of uh, health facilities is a violation of international humanitarian law wherever they may occur. Since uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine 15 months ago, the World Health Organization has verified more than a thousand attacks on health facilities in the country, causing 240 deaths and injuries among health workers and patients. As a result, up to 50% of health facilities in eastern and southern Ukraine are now not functional. For this year alone, we and our humanitarian partners have reached nearly 3 million people with emergency health services and medicine, 
and plans to reach 8 million by the end of this year. Today, we delivered enough medicine to treat some 2,000 civilians remaining in the community of uh, Preobrajenka, just five kilometers from the front line of the Zaporizhia region. Today's convoy was organized by the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and also delivered food, clean water, emergency shelter kits and construction, as well as hygiene materials. These supplies were provided by the International Organization of Migration, UNICEF, UNHCR, WHO, and the NGO World Vision International. Uh, regarding Cambodia, I wanted to say that the Secretary General reiterates that inclusive elections in which a plural plurality of views and voter choices is represented are important to um, engender confidence in the electoral process and underpin the ability of Cambodia's people to exercise their democratic rights. As he said during his visit to Cambodia last year, it is vital that civic space be open for human rights defenders to be protected and for civil society to play a wider role in society, all of which remain critical in preserving Cambodia's substantial development gains and consolidation of uh, peace. Uh, the Secretary General reaffirms the commitment of the UN to support a peaceful and democratic Cambodia that fully represents the human rights of all its citizens. Quick update from Myanmar and our response to Cyclone Mocha earlier, um, er, not too long ago, two weeks ago, two weeks after the cyclone hit, we and our partners have distributed shelter and other relief items to more than 63,000 people, and over 230,000 people have received some food assistance. While humanitarian workers continue to ramp up support where they have authorizations and available stocks, wider access for distribution and approval for the movement of supplies are urgent. Shelter needs continue to be a priority in the monsoon season approaches. Our humanitarian colleagues are also warned that the food reserves for households impacted by the cyclones are dwindling and communities are facing rising food prices. A quick update from MINUSCA and our Central Peacekeepers in Central African Republic. This week, the mission carried out long-range patrol in the country's western parts on the Buar, Bianga, Dili, and Beloko Gudro axes as well as actions to clear roads of mines and explosive devices. Meanwhile, the eastern part of the country where the security situation remains unpredictable, MINUSCA is increasing patrols and aerial reconnaissance while also providing safe passage to humanitarian workers, enabling them to reach the most vulnerable communities. A uh, quick update from Cameroon where the number of people internally displaced has exceeded 2 million mostly due to climate-related impacts and attacks by non-state groups. Uh, led by our resident coordinator, Matthias Nab, the UN team is supporting the government to provide emergency assistance and durable solutions for communities uh, hosting a vulnerable population impacted by displacement. That includes a UN, uh, UNHCR and ILO supporting, uh, offering train to training for eco-friendly enterprises and improve access to social uh, protection and HIV prevention treatment services. Also, um, initiatives led by young people having received grants of at least $5,000 each promoting economic resilience and youth entrepreneurship. UN Habitat and UN Women are also bolstering land access for agriculture and focusing on women and improving housing conditions for internally displaced uh, people. We'll have more online in our highlights. Uh, just for the record, you will have seen that last night we issued a statement in which the Secretary General strongly condemned the military satellite launched, um, conducted by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Any launch using ballistic missile technology is contrary to relevant Security Council resolutions. The Secretary General also reiterates his call on the DPRK to cease such acts and to swiftly resume dialogue to achieve the goal of sustainable peace and the complete and verifiable denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. We also issued a formal statement last night in which the Secretary General expressed his deep concern about the promulgation of the Anti-Homosexuality Act in Uganda. He called on Uganda to fully respect its international human rights uh, obligations and the respect for personal privacy, irrespective of sexual orientation or gender identity. Uh, today is World No... Tobacco. Exactly, No Tobacco Day. And the theme is Grow Food, Not Tobacco. 
On this day, WHO urges governments to stop subsidizing tobacco farming and support more sustainable crops that could feed millions. Tomorrow, um, there'll be a busy day. Uh, our guest will include, um, a guest of the briefing will be the Commissioner General of the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, Philippe Lazzarini. His agency is better known as UNRWA. Then at 1 p.m., uh, to, uh, being uh, June 1st, uh, tomorrow, you will have the pleasure to hear from the permanent representative of the United Arab Emirates, uh, Ambassador Lana Zaki Nusabe, who will uh, preside over the Security Council for the month of June. Uh, Edith. Uh, thank you very much, Steph. Um, on Sudan, can you elaborate a little on why the Secretary General um, wants to see the Security Council today, and uh, are we going to get any kind of uh, readout, or is he going to stop afterwards to talk to us? Uh, well, you know, my preference would always be for him to stop afterwards, uh, but everything's in negotiations. Um, we will uh, see if that happens. Uh, I, I don't want to preempt uh, the messages that we will give to the council, but needless to say that we are facing a, a, a dramatic uh, situation in, in Sudan, both on the political and the humanitarian end, and the Secretary General wanted to share some thoughts that he has with council members. I, I had one other question on Kosovo. Uh, does the Secretary General have any comment on the violence that erupted that uh, has uh, sparked NATO sending an additional 700 troops? I mean, we continue to, uh, to express our concern at the, at the situation uh, there and condemn the, um, uh, the violence that we've seen. Our representative on the ground is uh, continues to do what she can to, uh, to appease the situation. Maggie and then Kristen. Uh, back to Sudan. UNITAMS is due for renewal, I believe, mm -hmm. on June 3rd. Mm -hmm. So will uh, the SG, as part of his discussion, be asking for any changes to the mandate? Um, I think there's talk of, of just a technical rollover. So where Man does he the, fall? The mandate of... Unit Thomas or any political peacekeeping mission is firmly in the hands of Security Council members. The Secretary General, as I said, will share his thoughts and ideas on, on the current situation, but I, I, don't, um, I don't want to preempt uh, what he will say, and I think he wants to say it first to Council members. Ms. Salome. I was just wondering if you could give us an update on where Volko Perthes is and if he's still able to do his job given the I mean, the, the mission continues to do its job as it best can, given the, the circumstances. We continue to have a political presence uh, in Port Sudan. Uh, Mr. Purchase will make his way back to the region, I believe, uh, in early next, uh, next week. Madam. <clears throat> Thank you, Steph. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. No, go she, whoever it is. Go, go ahead. ahead. Shall I go ahead? <laughs> All right. Go, you go ahead. Hello, let me introduce myself. I'm Sharifa from another agency. Thank you, Stefan, for the opportunity. I just wanted to ask you if you have a reaction on um, reports that the Sudanese army has uh, suspended participation in the ceasefire talks that was led by Saudi Arabia and the United States. Apparently yesterday they said that they would extend the ceasefire for another five days, but today there are reports in Sudanese media that they have suspended the, their participation. Thank you. I mean, we are not a party to those to that agreement, to those talks. Uh, I can tell you that our humanitarian colleagues on the ground and our, our partners tr continue to try to ident identify uh, and resolve challenges to humanitarian access. On the ground, we are in touch uh, both with uh, with the government uh, and the um, uh, and the rapid support forces uh, in order for us to be able to coordinate the movement of humanitarian uh, humanitarian convoys to deconflict uh, wherever uh, possible. Our overall message continues to be that we need to see an immediate stop to all the fighting, uh, so we can tend we can tend to those uh, Sudanese people who need our help. And as we've been saying, there are millions and millions 
of Sudanese who need immediate humanitarian assistance. Ms. Linda. Thank you, Steph. Apropos of Sudan, uh, you mentioned that the SG wants to share his views with the Security Council today, and we've just heard reiterated what the you know, big problems are. Do you think he might want to share his views and ideas with the actual leaders of you know, the Sudanese conflict? Well, I mean, he, he, of, of course. In person? Uh, in person? No, I, I don't anticipate any travel uh, anytime soon uh, to Sudan, but uh, he had been in touch with, uh, with both generals uh, and will continue to do so uh, as needed, uh, whether it's in person, uh, by phone, or in exchange of letters. Uh, Gregory. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, today, uh, Reuters reported, uh, according to the source, that uh, the UN has proposed to Russia, Ukraine, and Turkey uh, for, to start preparatory work uh, for transiting Russian ammonia through the territory of Ukraine. So can you control such talks, or well, if yes? Uh, I, I'm not going to go uh, into a detailed uh, discussion of what, what, what uh, may be going on. As you recall, the Secretary General had put forward some ideas to, uh, to the parties to, inc to improve the facilitation of, of the work uh, in the Joint Coordination Center, to also work on the issue of ammonia export, which is part of, uh, of the deal that was uh, signed. Those conversations and, and contacts uh, are continuing, uh, but that's as much as I'll say right now. Margaret Bashir. Thank you. Um, one more on Sudan. So you say uh, humanitarian colleagues are trying to resolve aid access issues and challenges. Um, are you getting good cooperation from both uh, sides to the conflict in terms of delivering aid? And can you give us a, uh, figures on how many trucks and such have gone? Yeah, I mean, uh, last week. I, I can give you an accounting of the, I can go back and look at the, the, the accounting of the trucks that we said have, have moved. Uh, I don't recall it this at this point. Um, it, it's, it's really on a place by place uh, situation. Um, I don't think I want to say we're getting great or good cooperation from both sides. Uh, we are able to deliver humanitarian goods in certain places when we can manage to talk to uh, the men with guns um, and to ensure safe, safe passage. Uh, I mean, WFP has been able to resume food delivery, uh, food distribution in Khartoum. Uh, we've had a large number of trucks being able to, uh, to move. But what we would like to see is a nationwide cessation of, of hostilities so we don't have to do a case-by-case -case, uh, negotiations on, uh, for each convoy or each, each movement, uh, which is time-consuming and which is also, uh, also risky. Benno. Thank you, Steph. Um, I have a, so a story that you, as a cyclist, might, might like. Um, you've seen that some ambassadors were complaining about not having the opportunity to uh, lock their bikes in front of the GA Hall. Now they have a very new bike rack. It's usually empty. It's in front of the building. You might have seen it. It uh, turns out it seems that just ambassadors and deputy ambassadors can use it, not normal uh, diplomats, not people who speak in the GA. Isn't that a double standard? Um. Well, I mean, we we we're very uh, we're very happy that uh, that PRs and and others will have the ability to bike into work, and we hope uh, everyone uses that facility. What I can tell you is that in his program budget uh, for 2024, the Secretary General has put forward a proposal to the General Assembly uh, to expand uh, bike parking uh, for staff and even for reporters. <laughs> Um, and that would bring, we would basically double the capacity of, of bikes that we have and, and, and create a new space much closer to the 43rd Street uh, entrance, also with charging stations uh, for, uh, for e-bikes um, and scooters. Uh, we want to see this, we want to see greater bike access, we want to be more 
bike friendly. We want to be more friendly, full stop. Uh, and um, this is a step in the right direction. It's gone to the, to the General Assembly because obviously as everything that we do, that anybody does in New York, that uh, implies real estate, implies cost. So um, we hope they will go through the General Assembly. Thank you. On that note, I will pedal out of here and, uh, <laughs> and leave the space to uh, Paulina. I will trust me uh, until my job is threatened. <laughs> <laughs>